using the Iran for everything, I think that is not necessary and also is not beneficial for the both countries. I think that when we say that the Al-Qaeda has relation with Iran is completely a joke. We do not forget and everybody do not forget that the Al Bin Laden is a Saudi citizen and has a strong political and economic relations with inside of the Saudi. I think that everybody does not forget that from the 19 people of the people that committed the 11th of September, 15 people of that 19 was the Saudi citizens. So it seems that, and also now in, the, in this room, I think that many people also know that which country or which countries has supported the Daesh for many years. Just I would like to mention that the, the, the things that Minister mentioned here is completely against and opposite to the policy of the European Union leaders and even United States that does not have, that does have relations with Iran regarding the, especially the recent cases of the nuclear negotiation. And also the some kind of the relations that also Iran has with other region, regional countries shows that Iran also has some kind of the logical policy. Inviting Iran to present in the coalitions that for the things that for the solving the problem in Syria shows that Iran is a, is a main partner for the solving the problem in the Syria. That's all. Now on the third issue, the Honorable Consul General from Iran, I didn't say anything that was not based in fact. Doesn't the Iranian constitution say export the revolution? Doesn't the constitution say take care of the Shia, the dispossessed, as you call them? Didn't Iran create Hezbollah? Didn't Iran attack more than a dozen embassies inside Iran in violation of all international laws? We didn't attack them. Iran did. Didn't Iran manage, plan, and execute the 1996 attack in Khobar Towers against the American Marines? Yes, they did. The control officer was Brigadier General Sharifi. You're a military attaché in Bahrain. The bomb maker was Hezbollah. The explosives came from the Bekaa Valley. The top three leaders of the plot escaped and have been living in Iran ever since. Isn't that sheltering terrorists? One of them we captured last year in Lebanon, with an Iranian passport, not a Saudi passport, even though he's a Saudi citizen. Isn't that aiding and abetting terrorists? We didn't make this up. When the explosions in Riyadh happened in 2003, Saif al-Adhan was in Iran, along with Saad bin Laden, the chief propaganda person for Al-Qaeda, and four or five other people, senior leaders. Iran harbored them and protected them. We asked for them to be extradited. It was refused. Some of them are still in Iran. We didn't invent this. This is the fact. The order to blow up three housing compounds in Riyadh in 2003 was made by Saif al adhan the chief of al-Qaeda operations, while he was in Iran. We have the phone conversation on tape. We didn't make this up. Ronald Reagan used to say that facts are stubborn things. They are stubborn because we can't get around the fact. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization. Attacking embassies is very clear. They don't just blow themselves up. Somebody does it. Killing diplomats. Diplomats don't commit suicide by shooting themselves three times. Somebody is responsible. Iranian agents have been linked to terrorist attacks in Europe, to terrorist attacks in South America. We didn't make this up. This is the world. This is evidence. And so, yes, we wish and hope that Iran, a great nation, can be a great neighbor to us. But it takes two to tango. It takes willingness to give up this expansionist, aggressive policies and return to international norms and behaviors if you want people to deal with you. 
and our hand is extended to Iran. It has been for 35 years. But what we get in return are diplomats killed, embassies blown up, terrorists. We have Iranian agents captured in Saudi Arabia for plotting terrorist attacks. We stopped four shipments of weapons that Iran was trying to smuggle to the Houthis in Yemen. We have explosives that Iran tried to smuggle into Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait. This is not fiction, and this is not child's play. This is aggressive behavior. This is unacceptable behavior. This is behavior that violates all norms of international behavior and international law. That's why Iran is designated as a state sponsor of terrorism, and that's why Iran is sanctioned for its support of terrorism, not by us, by the international community. So could it be that the whole world is wrong and Iran is right? Could it be that maybe international law that says peaceful relations and non-interference in the affairs of others is wrong and Iran's approach of aggressively pursuing your objective irrespective of how you do it is correct? I don't think so. So if you want a Saudi official to not be critical of Iran, behave in a way that doesn't expose you to criticism. And so far, your history has been one of death and destruction, disregard for international law, and disregard for principles that have existed since the advent of nations, which is good neighborliness and non-interference in the affairs of others.